rights law, labour law, and democratic institutions such as locally elected school boards. Whereas the government itself has estimated that the Act will save Ontario $2 billion over two years, an amount similar to the opening offer of our teachers' unions. Whereas a discussion paper published in March this year for the Federation of Urban Neighbourhoods of Ontario estimated that cost savings of merging Ontario's publicly funded school boards to be between $1.3 and $1.6 billion annually. Therefore, be it resolved, A, that the Hamilton-Wentworth District School Board join with others including the Ontario Public School Boards Association to point out significant difficulties in the Putting Students First Act and to call for the review or repeal of the Act. B, that the Hamilton-Wentworth District School Board join others to advocate measures to create economic efficiencies without compromising student achievement and the well-being and well-being and without compromising the local collective bargaining process and c that the hamilton wentworth district school board reaffirm, reaffirm its support for the merger of public and catholic school boards to create one publicly funded school system for each official language that would create administrative um, economies while reinvesting savings in better education for our students. Much. This item will be discussed at the next regular board meeting. I now move on to item number 11. Notice of motion, Trustee Petal. I, I therefore move that. Uh, the motion brought forward by Alex uh, Johnstone be uh, of conversation tonight. Seeing that, we'll move on to item number 11. Failed the test. I was just kind of hoping that the reader of the notice of motion would have seconded it so we could move on. Okay. It's your turn. So we'll go on to this one. Yeah. Okay, so I will preamble it with the fact that I am looking for two-thirds support tonight so that we can have this discussion this evening rather than waiting. I think there's enough urgency to it I'll give that you we want to wait. I'll give you an Why opportunity after you read it to I'll read uh, it to first. Ask that. We'll follow the process. Thank you. So I'm putting forward uh, the right one. I was going to reread yours. <laughs> <laughs> Number 11. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> okay. Um, Putting this forward by myself and seconded by Trustee Todd White. Whereas the trustees of the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board wish to ensure the stability and safety of the learning environment for all Hamilton Wentworth District School Board students, and whereas local school boards across the province are supporting motions to either review or repeal the Putting Students First Act 2012, indicating that the provisions of the Act undermine human rights laws, labor law, and democratic institutions such as locally elected school boards, and whereas the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board does recognize the union's right to collectively bargain for its members. And whereas the public expects its local school board, its teachers unions, and the Ministry of Education as the local school board's funding source to work together to create positive learning environments for students free of labor strife. And whereas by individual emails to trustees dated August the 10th of this year, the Minister of Education urged trustees to, quote, continue to put students first by working quickly in the next three weeks to come to local agreements with your teaching staff and support, barg support staff bargaining units. We have built a reputation for education success that is the envy of the world, and I look forward to working with you more closely to continue doing what's best for our students and their parents." End quote from the Minister of Education. And whereas subsequently the Putting Students First Act was passed, and whereas locally elected trustees have not been included at the provincial bargaining table, and whereas the local trustees of Hamilton Wentworth District School Board require a deep and thorough understanding of the current negotiation issues and demands, both monetary and non-monetary, and also require an opportunity to try to resolve them, and whereas the local unions appear to be in a legal strike position in and around November 19th, and whereas the proroguing of government has reduced and or perhaps completely removed the ability to pass back to work legislation should it be absolutely necessary to maintain the classroom environment for our students. And whereas based on all of the above, 
there is an urgent need to stop causing hardship for students, their families, for teachers, and all members of the extended educational community. Therefore, be it resolved that the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board more creatively search for solutions, monetary and non-monetary, collaboratively with the unions to identify possible solutions with the goal of reaching local agreements that will stabilize the educational environment for our students. Thank you very much. Now my understanding is you'd like to suspend the, the rules to have this put on the floor? I would. Okay, let's get, see if we have a seconder for that. As Rusty White, uh, we'll need uh, two-thirds, that's a vote of eight, um, to put it on the floor. Do I get to speak to why I want that tonight? Or uh, is it just a straight it, vote? It's, yeah, it's just, it, there's no debate on. No on debate. No. I thought I did get to speak to why. Yes, Trustee Brown. Um, I believe that this can be debated. Yeah. You, well, I trust what you say when it comes to governance. <laughs> Absolutely trust well, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're in trouble. I will, go, I will then go back to Trustee Pell. Um, okay. I, I'll, I'll make it short because the motion itself is long. The motion itself explains it. There is an urgency. We know that, that, um, that the provincial framework, which was really supposed to uh, get us into um, you know, some resolutions around collective bargaining was breaking down, and in fact, it did break down. Um, and I guess I should save some of the debate for the actual approval of the motion itself, but the urgency to me is now, if we wait another month, we could be having to be back in this boardroom to make much more difficult decisions that are gonna be much harder in labor situations that we don't even wanna do. So I think we should have the debate tonight while the, uh, the urgency is there. And, uh, and I'll leave it at that. All right, did you want to add to what she said? Or? Okay, all right. Now we'll look to the vote. We need a vote of eight to put this on the floor. All those in favor of putting it on the floor right now? I have uh, Trustee White, Simmons, uh, Ewing, Stenekis, Turkstra, and Pedal. Those opposed to putting it on the floor right now? I have Trustee Brennan, Hicks, Corbin, Mulholland, Barlow, Bishop. Uh, oh, Johnstone, did I? Sorry, Johnstone. I'm afraid it doesn't get on the floor. Um, so we'll have to deal with this at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. And now we move to committee reports. Uh, this being the end of uh, sort of the uh, last meeting of the this uh, term uh, we'll, we're uh, going to get some year-end reports I believe and I we go to item 12 governance committee and I look to chair Brennan yes mr. chair I'm very happy as chair of governance committee to uh, make my verbal report uh, very first thing is to thank the um, very hardworking uh, governance committee. As you know, the terms of reference in our current rules and regulations um, set up the committee to include the chair of the board, the vice chair of the board, the possibility of the past chair of the board, and then two others. Uh, I'm actually one of the two others. And uh, as chair of the committee, therefore, I want to thank um, the chair of the board, uh, Tim Simmons, vice chair, uh, Bob Barlow, um, past Chair uh, Judith Bishop and then Lillian Orban um, for due diligence and, and dedicated uh, attention to some of the issues facing uh, the board through the Governance Committee. As you may fully well be aware, uh, our main focus and perhaps the only thing we've really been paying any attention to whatsoever is the Governance Review, uh, making sure that we take the opportunity to um, look at how things have been done um, and look at ways that they could be done better. Um, a, a, our consultant, Susan Hallett, uh, has been involved in first meeting with uh, all the trustees who <coughs> wish to be met and to gather um, sort of a summary statement of the different um, suggestions they have and things that are working and not working. Um, that she also attended a number of our meetings here, also read, I think, everything that has been on the website about our our committees and our board for the last uh, year or so, and has put together a preliminary draft report. That made it to the, uh, uh, to the governance committee uh, a couple of weeks ago. It is on the website as a draft report in 
Susan's efforts and in, in the spirit of open and transparent, and transparent, uh, we are showing the work as we do it. Uh, discussions are occurring um, at the committee level, but we're looking very much to the opportunity at a public information session in January to, um, uh, to listen to her suggestions as a body, as a board of trustees, to have some discussion around whether we like some of the suggestions or which ones uh, we don't like, and then to work towards creating perhaps a list of motions that would fundamentally change um, our rules and regulations if we so desire. Um, and I'm hoping, um, looking forward to a path towards perhaps committee a whole in January so that we can in fact as a group make those decisions. So anything that is currently in the preliminary report may not be what um, will remain. Um, uh, certainly, um, I, will, I will endeavor to bring any new uh, revisions to the individual trustees' attention. I apologize for not having done that with the last uh, governance committee, um, but we did put it on the website. And I know we don't, as individuals, um, casually walk through our board website to look for what might be interesting to trustees. So in, in, uh, in the coming weeks, I'll make sure that any new developments get to your attention immediately. So it's been, um, uh, it's been a great process. I think we've chosen a person who's very understanding of the trustee workload and trustee services and been very respectful of the individual trustees. And uh, I think the preliminary report gives us some um, material to chew on and we will over the next couple of weeks have more conversations at the level and then where I want it to land of course is with the Board of Trustees at a public information session. That is the work of the committee um, mostly the year of work and my absolute um, strong appreciation and gratitude to the, the committee members again and also to um, Heather Miller and Tracy McKillop for the tremendous work they do in helping the committee to get its um, feet off the ground and to do their very best uh, to organize me, which I understand is quite a difficult task. And then uh, very special thanks to the director. Um, it is uh, it speaks extremely well to the work of this committee um, and the importance of the governance work for the Board of Trustees that the director himself is um, uh, the staff liaison to the committee and uh, attends everything and helps plan everything. And that speaks extremely um, well to the strong relationship between how governance happens and how it gets done. So again, my many thanks to many wonderful people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Trustee Brennan, for that report. I now uh, look to uh, the Chair of Policy, uh, Trustee Bishop. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you will see that there's a small report um, on in front, uh, a lay down in front of everyone. So, um, very briefly, um, I'm very proud of the work that we have accomplished this year in the Policy Working Subcommittee. Eight policies have been approved by the board. Three policies have been revoked. We've revamped and revised the policy development process. And all pillar policies are either approved or in the policy development process, we shall bring us to the close of a, of a process that was set out four or five years ago to, to um, change the whole way in which we do policies. We'll, we'll finally be organizing under pillar policies, all policies, directives, and administrative memos at our next meeting this week and on this coming Thursday, Mr. Chairman. We have a very hard working committee and I'd like to thank them for the, the, their attendance, the, their um, very good contributions and their hard work. They are Alex Johnson, Laura Peddle, Jessica Brennan and Todd White. And we've had some wonderful support from Janice Tomlinson, Mark Taylor and Heather Miller when she was with us and Tracy McKillop and, and of course Ken Bain. So thank you to the staff and thank you to the working, um, the, the trustees on the committee. And I've just given you a little list of all the the um, policies that we've approved and revoked before you. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee. Now I go back to Trustee Brennan, Chair of Finance. Find your next one. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I welcome the opportunity to uh, 
again thank um, a slate of wonderful people. It would turn out that some of them are the same as who, <laughs> those who are on governance, so, but I will still thank them here again. Um, I think fundamentally in finance, uh, we've done some, we have a tendency to be focused on the budget development, and that's ab absolutely appropriate. But I do want to bring to everyone's attention some of the work we've done this year that is a little different than that. One of the things that we uh, spent quite a bit of time on was revising the Finance Advisory Subcommittee Terms of Reference. As you know, with the Audit Committee uh, being established for the Board, um, some of the usual financial monitoring that the um, Finance Committee did now was being moved over to the Audit Committee. So um, that left uh, some time in our um, agendas to pay some attention to other things. And um, we are now looking at capital projects. We are looking at um, those work plans towards uh, any capital issues, looking at the financial um, pieces and giving advice to the facilities management and the associate director as appropriate. So I, uh, that was approved by this board in February 2012 in terms of the change of uh, terms of reference, but it's really with the um, start of um, Daniel um, Del Bianco as the uh, senior manager for facilities that we have in fact been really looking at the capital pieces. So my thanks to him and to Ellen Warling on property disposition as well. So. Uh, we've also, and those, uh, I know we all work hard, uh, 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 so I don't want to overplay this, but I do want to point out that as a finance committee, somewhere between December uh, 2011 and um, May, June 2012, we probably had a dozen meetings. Um, and as you know, in the uh, budget development process, by the time we get to that, we are meeting on a weekly basis. Um, to put together a budget for uh, your uh, attention and approval. We also this year um, had again a public information session on the, on the workshop for finance and that was uh, really important for us as a group uh, if, with uh, again open and transparent processes to invite those in the community and the media to have attention, you know, pay attention to our financial um, workings as we develop the budget. So that was a, a great opportunity and we will repeat that practice this year. In addition to that, uh, people maybe uh, remember that we had some significant enhancements to the actual development process itself, uh, including a consultation process. And again, this year we will be moving towards something that's deeper and, and uh, more broadly based within the organization and also with some community opportunities. So uh, again, this is what we did in 2012, but it worked well. I think it gave us more information and helped us as I think individuals at the board uh, table to make good financial decisions. We've also now um, have our meetings primarily in public session. That has been a challenge for us not being sure if certain financial items uh, actually required private uh, sessions. But as we have moved forward, we have identified uh, those public session items and, and now a meeting in public for them. And I, that is a change and I think that's a welcome change both to the committee and to the community. And then um, finally, uh, um, uh, finally in terms of our activities, in terms of the capital project, I told you we were looking at various um, uh, financial uh, facilities management areas of responsibility, and that is new for us, and we're stumbling a little bit with understanding all that is required in terms of our responsibility, but we are do, uh, 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 looking at it with eagerness over the next year or so. I said I had thanks, and I have thanks for Judith Bishop, Wes Hicks, Lillian Orban, and Tim Simmons for their due diligence in uh, being members of the committee. I have uh, special thanks for Gail McDonald, who is a staff person. Again, uh, there are so many staff people who are trying to keep me organized, and sh everybody comes close, but it's, I'm sure it's my fault. Um, but Gail does a great job in, in the administrative side of the committee. Denise Dawson is uh, the budget guru, and uh, we are very grateful and appreciative of her skills and attention. And then finally, but absolutely not least,
somehow um, helping me to understand the role of chair of finance and to keep me on the path towards uh, bringing good information to this body of uh, trustees. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Trustee. Oh, yes, Trustee Hicks. As a member of the committee, I would like to, at this time, thank uh, Trustee Brennan for her leadership on the committee. Those long meetings we had in forming the budget this year can Chair kept us online, shortened the meeting, and did just a good job. Thank you, Wes. Thank you for that, Trustee Hicks. And I'll go to the Chair of Audit. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> if trustees will recall, the annual report from the Audit Committee was actually approved at board last month. It was passed to go to the Ministry as well, so it's a bit more of a formal process. Uh, we also belong to a regional Audit Committee of 10 boards, uh, with Waterloo being the host board. So my thanks uh, this year to the members, uh, myself, Jessica, Brennan, and Robert Barlow. And we have two external members uh, who have a wealth of knowledge, education, and expertise. And I think it's been a big learning curve for them, and they've brought enormous, uh, I would say, expertise and, and I would say outside thinking to the audit committee so I thank them very much and of course uh, Superintendent Grant uh, and Carrie Salemi are amazing uh, resource people for us this is a new a relatively new committee uh, for all of the the boards and I think that uh, the way that we've orchestrated ourselves and the audits that we've put in place and completed have been uh, extremely well done, and we're still on a learning curve. Uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't ask for a better team to be with on this audit committee journey because there are some crossovers with the finance committee that we're also trying to work out. So at the next meeting, uh, we will be looking at the audited financial statements uh, uh, produced by KPMG. And we should also be reviewing the terminations and retirement audit. And that meeting is in December. And my special thanks uh, to Gail McDonald as well, as uh, she also keeps, I would say, all of us on track and on time. And uh, it's a pleasure working with the uh, department. And of course, the new role of audit is interesting journey and it's a little bit different because the members uh, are there's an expectation to stay on that committee for continuity we've had a, a bit of turnover which is fine but the external members are expected to stay on for three of the four years and then the member trustees uh, for four of those years which might not be possible of course for everyone given everyone's different uh, commitments in their life but so far, we've had um, very good continuity and ec excellent representation uh, for this new committee. So thanks to everybody for that, and uh, look forward to next year. Thank, Thank you. you. OK, uh, now we move to our uh, student trustees, Ewing and Stenicus. Uh, and with the trust student trustees report, who's going to go first? Go right ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Over the last three we uh, few weeks, Lexi and I have been visiting uh, many of the high schools. Um, so far, we have visited Barton, uh, Westdale, uh, Sir Johnny McDonald, and Sir Win Winston Churchill Student Councils. And today, we actually visited Orchard Parks Student Council, where almost 30 students uh, were present, uh, which is amazing. Uh, so we're really thrilled to be there. That was a lot of students, and we've never seen a student council that big before, so it was amazing to see. And. Um, we are really enjoying the visits because we get to see the goals of each student council and some of the achievements um, that they've had so far this year. Um, also, we are continuing to discover that all students value their school's community and believe the key to a great school is the involvement, uh, the school spirit, and the teachers who are engaging the students. 
As well, a lot of the high schools we have visited have really expressed an interest in uh, co-op-like programs that link and connect high schools with universities and colleges to obtain a high school or a college high school credit. And as our school visits continue, we will be bringing more information back to the board. And recently, last Wednesday, uh, November the 14th, was World Diabetes Day. And we were thrilled to hear that a lot of students um, across the board participated in this event by wearing blue. And a lot, of school, or a lot of students actually went full out and painted their faces blue and wore blue morph suits. Uh, so that was really nice to see. And currently, uh, November is taking place across the board. And we know a lot of uh, students and teachers have been growing mustaches um, in support uh, and to raise money for men's health. So we will be talking to our senators more about Movember and how World Diabetes Day went this week. Uh, and we invite everyone or anyone who wants to come and join us at our upcoming Senate meeting this week. It's taking place on Wednesday, November the 21st, and it's at Sir Johnny McDonald from 3.30 until 5.30. Thank you. Thank you so much. Trustee Ewing, you're up. Um, all right, so the Ontario Student Trustee Association held our fall journal meeting about three weeks ago at the Sheridan Hotel. This was a great professional development opportunity for student trustees as we had a lot of very informative keynotes. Um, the Minister of Education came and spoke to us about the importance of social media within our school boards. Michelle Bates, right here from HWDSB, spoke to us about the importance of mental wellness. And also um, we had some other keynotes speak about equity and the engagement of youth. Um, the Ontario Student Trustee Association has partnered with Key Gordon, which is a Toronto-based advertisement company, to promote the Stick It campaign. Stick It is an initiative to motivate students to not eat fast food or stick it to fast food for the month of November. Um, Sydney and I have been able to bring this back to our board and encourage our senators to participate in this pledge and not eat fast food for November. So it's been working out pretty well. <laughs> Thank you so much for that report. Now we'll move on to my uh, chair's report. And this, this board of trustees, as you know, has come to the end of its second year of a four-year term. And looking back, we can see how far we've come. A year ago, we had not yet made our decisions regarding the accommodation reviews. Today, while we await ministry responses, we know how it is important to give our students buildings where technology is current and where the programs are varied and engaging. Knowledge changes so quickly. We must change quickly too. Our students need critical thinking skills and the right learning environments. This board has risen to that challenge with our district-wide approach to accommodation review. A year ago, we were still waiting to settle our issues around swing space for staff in the education center. Today, we are now seeing staff in new offices after a well-organized move from 100 Main Street West. This was a big undertaking, but one that staff handled with competence, patience, and a positive attitude. A year ago, this board was still wrestling with what it means to have a 21st century program strategy for our secondary school panel. Today, we have learned so much from our students about what they need, and staff are studying data to ensure that our facilities and programs deliver top-notch education for all. I'm sure you join me in anticipation for the details about the strategy that will come forward in the new year. A year ago, we had not yet begun a full governance review, but we knew we had room to improve. Now we have an expert consultant in place who is helping us transform our practices. As a board, we want to make decisions in an open and understandable way. That's why it's exciting to know that the governance advisor has written a draft report for us to look at in the months ahead. While I can't predict what changes will come from this draft report, it's exciting to know that we have begun this journey and are about to have discussions that will move us forward in this regard. As chair, I want to thank the director and his staff for going beyond expectations to complete the work of this board. You demonstrate complete commitment to our students' well-being and education. Thank you. To the board, I thank you for your innovation, your insights, and our shared commitment to get the job done for our students. A chair is only as good as the board they represent, so I'd like to thank you all for your help in that. Thank you very much. And now I look to the director for your report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. A couple of uh, key items that I wanted to share with the board since the last time we met. 
As the trustees are aware, we've been working very, very closely on the whole notion of service excellence and working with our managers and our service departments to excel in this area. And based upon their own insight to us that we meet often and regularly with our principals to ensure that we are promoting student achievement and well-being and the type of leadership that enhances that, they asked for a similar structure that allows them to understand the strategic directions in their own experience with the important work that they do. So two things that have happened since we last met is our manager's cabinet retreat, which I had the opportunity with Associate Director Bain to attend, and to engage in dialogue with our managers who are grappli grappling with what does it mean to fulfill our strategic directions and to improve student achievement when the specific role that they play might have an indirect impact. And I'm thrilled to report that they continue to grow in this very collaborative learning environment to become a strong voice of leadership for service excellence in our board. Connected to that is all of our leaders and service departments reporting to our managers spent a day together at Maple Lane, again, to understand, learn about, grapple with their role in relationship to our important work. This is the first of three meetings, and again, with its purpose to support their work and our mission to ensure that our learning spaces, our processes, and our structures are supporting student achievement. On a different note, a large group of us from the Hamilton-Wentworth District School Board, including Trustee Bishop as well, had the opportunity to attend the Mental Health Symposium that took place just a few weeks ago. A highlight for me was the opportunity to work closely with our own Kathy Short, who is, as you know, a director of ASSIST, where she still lives with us here in Hamilton-Wentworth, but has a very significant role to play in leadership in the province. She invited me to speak on the uh, pre-conference date to all the participants regarding our experience of what a district does, what a system does to think about creating the conditions that support mental health awareness as well as mental health intervention. It was an exceptionally uh, exciting event, I think, because what happened was the bringing together of many, many different people from community, from education, from government, to name a few, with the purpose of focusing on our students, their mental health, and how we can enhance and ensure that our structures are enhancing that mental health in a positive way. Another very significant piece that I wish to bring to the trustees' attention, though I know many of you are aware because you attended, is the Hamilton Jewish Federation Holocaust Education Committee has been working very closely with Waterdown District High School. Their exhibit was brought to the high school. The students were um, trained to be the docents, I think I've named that properly, those guides that could help us understand the exhibits and the history behind them, the learnings that they have had, and that is such an opportunity for our students. And again, we thank the Hamilton Jewish Federation Holocaust Education Committee for this amazing opportunity. And last comment for us is tomorrow, uh, a number of us from our board are, have been asked to uh, participate in a school improvement um, workshop, if you will, that is provincially, and it's in, it's in Toronto. And again, I have been asked uh, on behalf of senior leaders to bring to that discussion, again, what do superintendents and directors need to do in order to not only learn themselves, because obviously we have a role to play in the significant improvement of schools, but what is it that we need to learn in order to support our principals, vice principals, and managers so that they in turn can support all of our staff to meet the needs of our students. So that's another uh, very important opportunity for us not only to learn, but also for us to bring our experience in Hamilton-Wentworth to the larger provincial uh, scene. So those are some key items, uh, Mr. Chair, that I wanted to bring forward to the trustees this evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Director, for that report. We go to item 19 now. Uh, our Chair, uh, our representative for the Ontario Public School Boards Association. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just in terms of just high-level um, issues uh, or, or processes to bring to the Board of uh, Trustees' attention, um, and I last month gave um, a, a full report on lots of regional activities that we were doing as OPSPA. But certainly at the provincial uh, level, um, the focus on Bill 115, the impact on um, school boards is um, 
sort of a critical central piece. Um, but at the same time, uh, some of the work that we get in front of us to look at comes through our uh, social, our, our policy analyst uh, um, at uh, OBSPA, and the government has prorogued itself. So um, Jennifer must be doing other things these days. Um, uh, having said that, uh, the director has mentioned the, the mental health symposium for which OBSPA, as you know, the former former president of OBSPA, Kath, uh, Catherine uh, Fife, was involved in helping put that together. And now we continue uh, on a more annual basis, and I'm very pleased about that. There is a public symposium, as we always have, for education from uh, the OBSPA organization in January. Uh, those dates probably have been sent to you, but I'd be happy to uh, send them out again. And uh, in terms of the uh, Board of Directors uh, meeting next uh, Friday and Saturday, uh, I, as the director for this board, is, I'm not able to go, but my alternate, who is Alex Johnstone, will be able to attend. So we'll get her report next month. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, now we'll move on to correspondence. Uh, the first item uh, is um, from the Canadian National Autism Foundation, and uh, um, wondering if we would recognize the month of April as uh, with special attention to April 2nd as Autism Awareness Month. Um, we can receive and file, we can refer this, we can Trustee Bishop. Mr. Chairman, I believe that informally we do in fact recognize April as, as um, Autism Awareness Month. And I think actually many schools do have a special Autism Day. So it would seem to me that this is not a big deal for us to formally recognize April as Autism Month. And, and if others are willing to do so, um, I, I would move. Um, be prepared to move, so move that. I, I'm not sure how people feel okay. about process, but but it, this would seem to be fairly straightforward. Okay, well, let's see. I uh, mean, the item is yes. straightforward. So you're looking to move that at the HWDSB, uh, April becomes uh, Autism Awareness Month. Is that correct? That's correct, Mr. Jim. We have a seconder, Trustee White. All those in favor of the motion? That's unanimous. Thank you. There we go. Okay, next item from Grand Erie District School Board. Um, for a motion to receive and file, or for uh, Trustee Barlow. Uh, receive and file from Trustee Barlow, seconder. Uh, Trustee Bishop. All those in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you. Next item. Mr. Chairman, yeah. the, two, the two next letters are on the same subject. Yeah. So could we, could we not move them both at the same time? You certainly may. Yeah, to receive and file, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. On item 22 and 23 to receive and file, I have a seconder for that. Trustee Barlow, thank you. All those in favor, please raise your hands. That's unanimous. Thank you very much, trustees. And now uh, we move to item 24. Any public questions for clarification? This is for members of the public to ask questions of clarifications for items on the agenda. Any? I look for a motion. Uh, before we go to a motion to adjourn, if you're looking at the, uh, at the uh, meeting schedule, we have upcoming public meetings. Um, you'll see on there, there's many of them. I won't name them all, but uh, 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 we have uh, Community of the Whole, next Community of the Whole is December 3rd, uh, and uh, uh, as well, well as uh, December the 10th, and uh, um, I believe we also have initial board that night as well too, and we'll have our next regular board on December 17th. Um, if you want to have a look at the list of the... Yes, Jessica. Yeah, Mr. I did that at the oh, thank you. Like yes, the and Trustee, nice my Vice Chair also reminded me of that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, looking for a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Trustee Brennan. Seconder. 
Oh, Trustee Bishop, thank you. All those in favor of adjournment, raise your hands. That's unanimous. Thank you, Trustees.